Hi everyone, Dave here at East Rosebud Fly and Tackle in Billings, Montana. We're going to continue our series tying different flies. Today we're going to tie the Royal Wolf. What makes it royal is the three-part abdomen, the peacock, red floss, peacock, and the white calf tail top. Now there are a lot of variations to the wolf pattern. There's the grizzly wolf, the osavo, the blonde, differences in different body materials and typically using elk hair or deer hair for the wings. Lee Wolf created this fly back in I believe the 1950s. I'll be the first to admit this is not an easy fly. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most difficult, this has got to be a 9.5. It's not an easy fly to tie but with practice you can do it and that's all it takes is practice. So what we're going to start with, I'll show you what we're trying to create. The wings are probably the most difficult part. Now these, this is the calf hair, calf body hair wing. We're going to be using calf tail because we're going to be tying this on a size 12, 1x long hook. And the calf body hair simply isn't long enough for anything over a si or bigger than a size 14. Calf tail has its difficulties, but it's not impossible to use. All right. And if you can believe it, Lee Wolf never used a vise, he never used a thread bobbin. He tied all of these by hand and his mouth. So that I would have liked to have seen personally, because I don't know how you could possibly do it. I, I need all the help I can get. So we're going to start our thread right behind the eye, about an eye width back. I'm using Vivas 80 black thread. We need a lot of thread strength to tie this material in. And Vivas, in my opinion, is the strongest thread for its diameter out there. We're going to stop at about the 75% point there. That's very important on this fly. All right, calf tail hair. Calf tail hair is difficult to work with, I'll be honest with you. Uh, the, the best hair is in the middle two-thirds of the tail. The tip hair is too curly. It's long, but it's too curly. The back, the, the butt end of it, even if it is white, it varies quite a little bit in length. So we're going to use the middle third of it. Now the most common problem with tying these type of, of flies is people don't use enough calf tail. We need a substantial amount of calf tail to build this wing and to divide it. Plus, as you're going to see, about half of the clump that we pick out of the tail we're going to discard. It's going to be short hairs. So always, always start with more hair than you think you're possibly going to need. You can always take some hair off of it, but it's very hard to add to it. So we're going to get a nice sizable clump here. Again, from about the middle third of the tail. Get a nice clump and cut it off as close to the tail as you can. Okay, so it looks like a lot of hair, doesn't it? But you'll see we're going to discard a good portion of it. Grab the tips about a third of the way down from the tips, hold it very firmly, and just start peeling out these short hairs. These short hairs don't accomplish anything on the fly. They're not long enough to give us the wing that we want, and all they do is add bulk to the tie-in, which we don't want. So be very fastidious and really, really clean out all of these short hairs. If you have many short hairs left before you try to stack it, you'll find it very difficult to stack. The short hairs get in the way. Move our fingers up just a little bit more. Pull out more of this. And you can see that we have now about half of what we started with. Okay. Next we're going to stack it. Make sure that your hair stacker has a large enough funnel opening on it so whatever size clump you put in it has enough room to move. If it can't move, it won't stack. Use that funnel and kind of circularly put your hair in there. Anytime you're stacking hair, make sure that none of it sticks above the funnel. If you're pressing it down with your finger, it won't stack, so it's got to be within the funnel. If it's too long, cut it off. Hold the stacker with your thumb and your middle finger, put your index finger on the top, and stack. It takes a lot of stacking.
see what we have here. That looks pretty nice. Oop, one little trick I ignored there. We're going to put this back in. Of course, the more you handle a stacked bunch of hair, the better the chances are you're going to mess up the tip. They won't be even anymore. So since we're going to be tying these in with the tips over the hook eye, we're going to take it out of the stacker this way. Take it with our thread hand. That way we minimize the amount of handling. Okay. Now we want this wing to be a hook shank long. I like it to be just a little bit longer because we're going to be bending this up with a thread dam, which means we'll lose a little bit of the length. Twist your thread, cord it up, get it really tight. Again, calf hair is not a hollow hair. It's slick. It's very difficult to tie in, so you need maximum thread pressure on this. Measure it a good solid hook long. Put your calf tail right where your thread is, right at the end of your fingers. I like to try to squeeze the hook and the calf tail together. Make one soft loop over it. Make another soft loop over it. Now, keep it pinched tightly, and this is what I have a problem with. I don't have a lot of pinch left in my finger, but you want to keep it on top of the hook shank. Let's check our position here. We're still good. All right, now we're going to wrap a very tight band of thread going towards the hook bend, keeping that calf tail on top of the hook shank. All right, each wrap, you can see I'm really snugging it down. All right. Now, there's a lot of bulk here, obviously, and we want to reduce that as much as we can. You do not want to just bring it up and cut it off square. You'll have a very difficult time smoothing that out when it's time to tie the abdomen. Ideally, if I could cut with my left hand, which I can't, you would bring your scissors in this way, lift up your hair, and cut it at an angle. I'm going to do it this way. We're going to bring it up at about a 45 degree angle lay our scissors as close to the end of our thread wrap as we can and try to nip that off at an angle. Now we're going to come back. That's a little longer than I would like, but what we have is what we have. Some more tight thread wraps and it looks like my whole wing has slipped back. Did I say calf tail was hard to work with? But honestly, with practice, it's a lot easier. Get those butts tied down. That'll help to keep that from rotating like that. Okay, and we'll use our old friend, a little head cement here. layer that well with head cement. Not that well, but okay. All right, now the next step is we want to bring this vertical. We're going to build a thread dam right up against the face of this calf tail and try to force it up. It's very important to try to get this as vertical as you can. Now normally when I tie these for myself, I use white thread when I'm tying up the wing. That way the thread doesn't show any little boo-boos, and that way, if you have white thread, what you can do is lift about a third of this wing up, make a couple of thread wraps to dam, make another third, a couple of thread wraps, and finally the last. And that really helps to keep your hair vertical. But I'm using black thread here so that it's more visible for you. We're going to shorten up our thread so that our bobbin tip is right next to the hook. Spin it, cord it up, and tighten it up a little bit. And then we're going to start some thread wraps just as close to the butt of that calf tail. You see that I'm angling these thread wraps back. We're going to make a bit of a taper here because we do have to hackle this fly, so we don't want just an abrupt cessation of our dam. But use plenty of thread and really build this dam right in front of that wing. 
If you don't get it vertical now, later on as you're fishing this fly, the wind will just slowly cock forward. So don't be afraid to use enough thread and to really force that wing as vertical as you can get it. Okay? Now the next part is, is we want to divide this wing into two halves and then we want to post it. So there's a lot of different ways. People have different techniques. Some people like to bring their thumb in here and kind of fan it like a comparadon. Other people like to bring their scissors or a bodkin in. However you divide it, try to get it even. So I'm going to take the far half, try to keep it even, try to get my hair separated as well as I can. Sorry, I'm including this, but I'll show you here in a second. Now I'm bringing my thread from the back of the wing diagonally between them. And I want to take three or four wraps at right on top of each other. Again, keep your thread close, thread tight, make three or four wraps and really separate that wing out. Then we'll do the same to this wing. We're going to take one wrap behind the wings to kind of lock our thread wrap in. Then we're going to pull our near wing toward us. Again, try to make sure you have a good even division point. Bring your thread between the wings, right down through the middle, and make several thread wraps right on top of each other. Okay. Then we'll take one more thread wrap behind to kind of condense these wings and then we'll come up front. Again, if you're using white thread, then a lot of this is masked. Next thing we're going to do is post these wings. Now, we're not, it's not like a parachute fly and that we're actually going to put hackle on the wings. We're not. So we don't have to post it up very far, thank God. But we do need to post them to keep them separate. So on the far wing, I'm going to start posting it counterclockwise. It helps to go ahead and bring that wing up vertically where you can see it well. This is your opportunity if you've got any stray hairs. Try to condense them together. Make sure that your wraps are down as close to the base of this wing as you can. Again, this kind of takes a bit of a touch, takes a little practice, but it doesn't take many wraps. I'm only taking about three or four wraps up. Try to keep them moderately tight. And then three or four wraps back down. Come down, make one turn. Oops, where am I? All right, lift the wings up. I'll show you here in just a second. Get your hair all combined, make one wrap in front, one wrap behind the wings. So I've posted one wing, okay, counterclockwise. Now I'm going to post this, ne this near wing clockwise. Again, keep your thread short. Keep your wraps as close to the base of the wing as you can. You don't need a lot of wraps, three or four, just to keep these wings separate. When we're done, one wrap in front, one wrap behind. If your thread wraps have marched up a little on the wing, you can kind of push them down. Another reason I like to use white thread, there you go. All right. If I was using white thread at this time, I would whip finish behind it and then put on my dark thread for the rest of the fly. So the wings are set. You can always use your tires, friend. Put some head cement there at the post to help keep them firm. A little bit in between. And a little on the back. All right. Now we have this huge shouldered fly and we want to try to even out this abdomen. We're going to bring our thread back down to the end of the hook shank. Traditionally you use moose body hair, moose hawk hair if you can find it is also excellent. What we want is a hair that does not flare easily. Okay, so moose body hair is a pretty good choice. 
and we want our tail to be about the same thickness as one of the wings. Again, we're going to cut off a pretty substantial little clump here, hold it by about a third of the way up from the tips, clean out the short hair, all the under fur. See what we have here. Now this moose hair, of course, is much longer than my stacker. So for, or in order for me to stack it effectively, I'm going to have to cut some of the base of this hair off. All right, in the stacker it goes. All right, and there's the problem. You can't have that, not if we want well-stacked hair. So we slide it back out, and we cut a little more off. When you tie a dozen or a half a dozen flies, you get used to working with the material that you have on hand and you won't have nearly as much wastage. It doesn't take a lot to stack moose hair and if you have these wings posted correctly, a little bit of head cement, you can push them around and get them where you want. Actually, this will do. Again, we're looking for something of the butt of it about the diameter of one of the wings. We're going to measure this hook shank length. To here. All right, your left hand. As before, you're going to hold this at about 45 degrees towards your side. Make one soft wrap, make the next wrap in front of it, pull it up, and the thread torque will help bring that material up on top of the hook, like so. We're going to wrap forward. Now before we get to this huge transition between our wing butts and our abdomen, we're going to take this hair, and again, if you can cut left-handed, Great, because what we want to do is we want to taper this hair so that it mates as closely as possible with this big bump here. We're going to bring it up, cut it at an angle. Try to marry that as closely as we can with that wing butt hump. We're going to go ahead, bring our thread up to it. And for our abdomen to look nice, we want this smooth, so you can come back here, try to smooth this out as well as you can. Okay, as with the Royal Coachman, when you're using Peacock, you really do need to reinforce it. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. I'm going to reinforce it with some extra small copper wire. Not only does it do an excellent job of reinforcing it, but I said, I think you'll see when it's done, it adds another element to the fly. I think it's very classy looking. I think you can see it on this fly, the effect that that ribbing has over the hurl and over the floss. It's very pretty. So since we're going to reverse wrap this wire, we're going to tie it on our side of the hook, right here near the base of the wing butts. As you wrap it, I got a loose hair here. And wrap it down to the base of the tail. Again, if you're not happy with the taper here, this is another opportunity. To try to smooth that out. Okay. Next, we're going to build our tripart abdomen. Now you have to remember, we only have so much space to work with, and it's very common error for people not to keep that in mind. We have to tie three different pieces of abdomen here, plus we want to leave room behind the wings, because we want to turn several turns of hackle behind the wing and several turns of hackle in front of the wing. So you have to be very conscious of your proportions on this. Peacock hurl, you can use an eyed stick, which is a better quality hurl. It's thicker, the flues are thicker, or you can use strung peacock curl, which is what I'm using here. It's still usable, you just need a lot more of it. We're going to pull off about six or seven strands here. 
try to even up the tips a little bit. They don't have to be exact because we're going to be cutting off about an inch anyway. The tips of peacock curl are simply too tender to tie in. They're going to break off on you. And then we're going to use the same technique. Make sure your tips are square. Bring it slightly on our side of the fly. One thread wrap, second thread wrap to bring it up. Now at this point you have a couple of options on how you want to reinforce your peacock. You can make a dubbing loop, bring your thread down, make a dubbing loop, and wrap it that way. You can wrap your thread around the peacock curl and wrap your hurl and your bobbin at the same time. That will reinforce it. We're going to use wire instead. What I like to do when I have multiple peacock curls, I give it just a little twist, maybe a turn, not too much, or you'll break the tips off. And again, be conscious of the room you have available, which is only about a third of this hook shank. All right, as I've noted before, get into the habit. I have peacock coming out everywhere. Get into the habit of tying off your abdomen materials anywhere but the top of the hook. Those little stubs of hurl, wire, whatever, can split a wing case if you're tying a fly that has a wing case on it. And we don't want that. So right now we've got our third. We're going to bring our thread up a few turns. I'm using single strand red floss. If you have the old style four strand red floss, simply strip one strand out of it. On a fly this size, uh, more than one strand is simply too much to control. It's too bulky. Sometimes it helps to wet the end a little bit to tie in. What we're going to do is we're going to tie this floss in. We're going to wrap it back and we're going to wrap it back forward again so we have a double layer of floss. Wet that a little bit. Our usual tie in here. Right now we're at about the 60% point on the hook. Two wraps of thread to hold it. You can manipulate your floss, you can flatten it, you can cord it up by twisting it. What we want, what we want to achieve here is a nice smooth body. Okay. Wrap forward, wrap back. And we're trying to be conscious of the room that we have left available and the materials that have to be tied on it. Clip that off close. So we're right here, and now it's time for a little more peacock. Take off another half a dozen strands or so. Try to even up the tips a little bit. And cut off about an inch or so of those tips. Make sure they're nice and square. Tie them in right behind the floss. And advance your thread just a couple of wraps. That's all the room we have left. Again, we're going to twist this. Just a turn. And bring it around. Another turn. And then we're going to tie it off again on the far side of the hook. Two turns is plenty. Still have wire to wrap. And nip those off. Alright, so done a pretty good job of keeping a tripart abdomen here. Now we're going to take our wire, bring it around underneath the hook. I like to keep these wraps fairly close together. One reason, of course, is the reinforcement aspect of it. Another reason is I just really like the effects. I have an errant hair here and I'm just going to get rid of it. There. Okay, keep the wire tight. I like to have a couple of wraps over that floss. It really helps to show it off. Keep wrapping until we get to where our thread is. Alright, a couple of thread wraps. You can cut the wire off or you can break it off. If you're going to break it off, make sure that your thread, your bobbin is tight. 
because as you twist this wire, if it's not tight, your wire will want to reverse wrap itself around the hook. So keep your thread tight. It only takes a couple of twists with this small wire. Or not. All right, well, we'll go to plan B. That's called tungsten scissors. All right, now, time to hackle this fly. As you see, we have room behind. We need to have two or three wraps of hackle behind. We need to have hackle in front. I'm going to be using one of our new products. As I've discussed in other videos, it's become very, very difficult to find good dry fly quality hackle in sizes 14 and larger. The genetic hackle engineering has been fantastic. We have super quality hackles. However, we've lost those larger hackles. So I'm using a new product that I showcased in a previous video. This is some half saddles that we've recently gotten from Metz. The nice thing about them is there's larger hackle in it, which I'm overjoyed with. You can do this a couple of different ways. If you have good quality hackle and brown hackle, it can be difficult to find really good quality hackle. You can tie in two pieces of saddle hackle and wrap them at the same time, or you can tie one piece in and just wrap the hell out of it. We're going to go ahead and wrap two hackles together. This is not actually a true brown. It's a little bit more of a badger. It has the darker center, but I think you'll like the effects of it. So we're going to put these hackles in. We're going to marry them front to back, shiny side towards you. Try to get these tips evened up. And then we're just simply going to strip some of that hackle off the bases. We want a long enough bare stem that we can tie it down to the eye. We also want a few hackles stripped off of the leading side so that that first turn nests very well. With the shiny side towards you, the hackle t uh, the quills together. We're going to tie it on our side of the hook, shiny side up, right at the end of our peacock where we tied our wire in. Wrap this very tightly right behind the wings. We're going to come in front of the wings. You see I have excess quill here. I'm going to cut this off right back behind the hook so we don't have to bother with it later. Continue to wrap this down tightly. Now you have to be conscious. We want to try to keep a nice base here. If we have a lumpy base here, the hackle is going, not going to wrap well. So if you do have a lumpy base, use your thread now to try to smooth that out so the hackle will wrap nicely. Get our two feathers together, hold them together. Keep them tight. Like I say, you can wrap them individually if you want to. There's nothing wrong with that. Since we're using double feathers, two turns is equal to four right behind the back of the wing. Bring your wings back and bring your hackle as close as you can up to the front of those wings. Try to get as many hackle turns in front as you do in back. Bring our hackles straight up. Thread over the far side of the hook. Stand the hackles up. I got a few errant ones there. Pull it down tight. All right, get this head back. We're going to sweep these hackles back just a little bit and see if we can capture them with a couple of thread wraps wrapping back towards the hackle. Turn this up a little bit. And we'll whip finish. Make sure you don't trap any hackle as you're doing this. And finally, just a touch of head cement. All right, this may not be the best royal wolf you've ever seen. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm confident the Russian judges would give me a 10. It's a difficult fly. After you've tied a few, you may decide you'd rather buy them than tie them, and that's perfectly okay.